Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm your host, Dr. Angel Storm. Today I wanna to talk to you about the importance of your vagus nerve and understanding the role that it plays and why it's important to address this when you are going through the healing process and detoxing your spirit, soul, and body from being around a narcissist and being in those high conflict situations. So just a little recap about your body. You have primarily two forms of control in your body. You have the parasympathetic nervous system, which is known for like the rest and digest response. And you have the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight, flight, freeze, fawn mode. When the sympathetic nervous system is activated, this means that your parasympathetic nervous system cannot be activated and vice versa. Only one of these can be activated at a time. When your sympathetic nervous system is online, your prefrontal cortex shuts down, you are not able to make decisions, and this is why a lot of people end up getting into long drawn out custody disputes, divorce issues, business settlement problems, because they're so used to reacting to whenever a narcissist says something to them or to trying to defend themselves from something. It's this illusionary uh, uh, threat that their body, their the evolution system that your body has gone through to create this for you is actually highly effective. But the problem is that we misuse it and we don't learn how to regulate these things. We think our body should just learn how to do that. But when you think about any kind of other thing, how to walk, how to eat healthy, you have to teach your body how to do these things. And so in this video, I really wanna help you understand your anatomy a little bit better so that you can understand how to walk yourself through this healing process. So when the sympathetic nervous system is online, it is going to help you react very quickly, help get you out of situations that would actually be physically endangering to you. And again, when you are actually dealing with a situation that is physically threatening to you, you want to make sure your sympathetic nervous system has this response, that it can come online and it can show you the way out of that situation in the quickest and most effective way way possible for you. So this is to also help you understand we should not demonize your sympathetic nervous system. It is there for a reason. It is there for a very specific reason. It's when we're misusing these things and we don't understand how to regulate them that we actually partner with the harm that's being done to us emotionally so that it sits into our bodies. The vagus nerve runs down your spinal cord. So it starts at the base of your head and it goes down your spinal cord and it is connected to both sides of your body. And the function of the vagus nerve is to turn on the rest and digest parasympathetic nervous system. It connects to numerous organs in your body, including your heart, your lungs, all of your digestive organs, and there's various glands that it's also connected to. So while you have the sympathetic nervous system, which will dump a ton of hormones, chemicals, neurotransmitters into your blood in order to get you uh, the energy that you need in order to get away from a situation that could be potentially life-threatening to you, that's amazing. That's one system. Your vagus nerve also controls your parasympathetic nervous system, which has those exact same functions, except in the opposite way. These are your calming uh, mechanisms. These are the things that are going to keep you level-headed, the things that are going to allow you to just uh, be and observe and to really process through whatever it is that you're experiencing. Your vagus nerve influences your heart rate, it plays a role in maintaining the stability of your cardiovascular system. It, it helps slow down your heart rate. It's involved in the regulation of your blood pressure, and it prevents excessive stimulation of your heart. Vagus nerve is also responsible for your respiratory functions, so how to breathe in and breathing out. This is why breathing techniques are so important because it actually will forcefully get offline the sympathetic nervous system and force your parasympathetic nervous system to come online, which I'm going to teach you one 
uh, in this video as well. Your vagus nerve also plays a major role in your digestive process. Um, everything from when you first take a bite, you know, when you bite something, you've already started the digestive process in your mouth. And the salivatory glands are connected and regulated by your vagus nerve. And so, so every part of your digestive system is regulated by your vagus nerve. I did a v video previously where I listed out like 28 uh, things that could be occurring in your body that are actually a trauma response. So there's something that is, is a disease, but it's actually being caused because there's trauma trapped inside of your body still. And even so even if you're out of that situation, you're physically removed from whatever situation you had with the narcissist, you could still, you're carrying that trauma with you into your new environment. And so you can check that out. I'm linking it in the description of this video. You can watch that after this one where I list a ton of issues and a lot of them have to do with your digestive system. This is because the vagus nerve has not been allowed to fully do its job in terms of how it regulates your digestive process and uh, the release of pancreatic enzymes, for example, is a huge one that it controls. And it's going to be impossible for that to happen if every five seconds you're moving from your sympathetic nervous system into your parasympathetic nervous system. It's the start and stop, start and stop method. That's what makes it so difficult for the gastrointestinal regulation process to occur. And Again, your metabolic rate is influenced by your vagus nerve because it impacts your glucose homeostasis. So the level of glucose, your blood sugar, uh, is regulated through your vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is also known to help um, anti-inflammatory responses, so uh, immune responses, your re reduction in uh, inflammatory diseases. Again, I mention autoimmune diseases, and this is often because they people cannot leave their vagus nerve online, so to speak. Their sympathetic nervous system does not have enough time to actually come online and do all of the functions that it needs to do before it's interrupted and brought back online by the parasympathetic nervous system because you, you take a perceived threat and your body is treating it as it's real because you haven't learned how to regulate that. And your vagus nerve is also, uh, it does a ton of things. I'm not going to have time to cover them all in this video, but it does regulate your social engagement. So the, uh, the way that you, your facial expressions, your vocalization, you know, the tone of your voice, how lo loud, how soft, how, how you're speaking, this is all regulated by the vagus nerve. And it's also uh, been associated with mood disorders. So um, there's now therapies that are looking at how to stimulate your vagus nerve in order to treat things like depression and anxiety because typically it's just that the vagus nerve isn't left online long enough, which I already stated. And actually there's this little device. I just got one. I am not affiliated with them and I'm not even sure if they work. I just got it. Uh, to see if it will do this externally. So it's a little device, you wear it around your neck, and it stimulates your vagus nerve to help control your emotions. So I just want you to know there are ways to externally stimulate your vagus nerve. I'm going to give you some options in this video as well. So just from what I've talked about so far, you can see how your vagus nerve would be impacted and affected by being in a situation like being around a narcissist all of the time where there's hyperarousal, there's hypervigilance, there's a chronic stress response. You've got the immune and inflammatory responses that are coming online. You got distresses happening in your gastrointestinal system. You've got the impact on mental health, your disrupted social engagements, you know, your your memory, by the way, chronic stress, trauma, all of this will affect your cognitive functions. And your vagus nerve has connections to the brain regions that are involved in your memory, uh, your ability to, to store memories, as well as your ability to uh, to make decisions. Like I said, it's directly related to your prefrontal cortex. And you're going to have issues 
whenever your vagus nerve is not able to do its job, which is obviously very, very extensive as I've listed, as I've already listed. So now I want to talk to you about some things that you can do to start regulating your vagus nerve. And one of the things is a breathing exercise, and I call this the 7412 method. So basically you breathe in for seven counts, you hold for four, and then you breathe out for 12. And you need to do this at least three times, and this will forcefully shut down your sympathetic nervous system and bring online your parasympathetic nervous system. So being really mindful, practicing these deep breaths. If you can't do the 7-4-12 method, then you should do the 4-4-8 method. Basically what we're looking for here is that your exhale breath is longer than your inhale breath. And so in that method, it's the same thing, just you know, breathe in for four, hold for four, and then breathe out for eight if you can't do the 7-4-12 method. Mindfulness, meditation, all of these should be a regular um, a regular fixture in your schedule. One of the things that I have people say to me when they first start meditating is that it's too hard, they can't sit still. This is a really good indicator that your body is making decisions for your life. So your mind is not telling your brain, which should then be telling your body what to do. That is the correct order. Your mind tells your brain, which tells your body what to do. Instead, you have your body telling your brain, telling your mind what to do. And when you have this, this is a very good indicator that your vagus nerve is not regulated, that you find it very difficult to rest and digest, which again is the primary function of your parasympathetic nervous system and it's not having that effect on your body right now. You're you're doing whatever feels good to your body, but because your body is so dysregulated, you're making bad choices for yourself, for your future. This is why it is so important to start regulating this specific nerve. Doing stretches is also really important. You know, I've talked about doing somatic exercises. You can also find integrated vagus nerve coaches that will help you start to regulate and get in touch with your with your vagus nerve in every sense of of what that means so starting with the, its connection to your brain and moving uh down your body down your spine it's also really important that you learn to laugh and you you do things that are going to cause you to have joy and to laugh Laughing, the vibration that you put off when you laugh actually stimulates this vagus nerve and it releases neurotransmitters that are are responsible for promoting relaxation and also authenticity. So it's really important that you you interrupt whatever stressful situation that you're having with joy, even if this is kind of artificial, like you turn on a funny movie or you watch something funny on YouTube or whatever, even if it isn't like, oh, this thing happened naturally and it's funny to me, it doesn't matter. It's about stimulating your vagus nerve so that your body can get used to being more in this rest and digest mode as opposed to the fight, flight, freeze or fawn mode. And um, there's actually a lot of studies on vibrations that I'm really super into. But one of the things that is so interesting to me is that, you know, humming um, um, is really important for your vagus nerve. So just a simple hmm stimulates your vagus nerve. And you can do this at different tones, different frequencies and so forth. But there, the muscles in your throat are, are primarily... Um, the way to stimulate your vagus nerve. And again, this little device that I bought, that's the reason it sits right here is because it's known that those muscles are going to, to interact with the vagus nerve, you know, the most effectively. Cold exposure also, uh, also gets your vagus nerve um, and online and it improves its responsiveness. So in other words, it gets it online and also gets it to start activating to every part of your body, your brain, your organs that it's connected to. So cold showers, immersing your face in ice water, all of these things can help you 
regulate your vagus nerve externally. Um, physical activity actually enhances the, the kind of tone, the overall strength of this nerve. And, um, and it's also very good for your cardiovascular health, which it's heavily connected to. So these two things go hand in hand. Um, also you want to make sure that you are getting omega-3 fatty acids in your diet. This is, these are going to be the building blocks for what regulates your overall nervous system. So fatty fish, flax seeds, walnuts, you want to make sure that you're getting these things from healthy, uh, organic sources as much as possible. And also you can, um, you can, uh, externally stimulate your vagus nerve system through self-massage techniques. And uh, and again, I really recommend that you look into somatic um, exercises for you to incorporate into your daily routine because the more time that you, you take to do this and also stretching goes along with that, you know, again, it runs up and down your entire spine. So when you stretch, you are pulling on this nerve system, but you're also typically paying attention to your breath. You're being mindful about what you're thinking about. You're being present in the moment and you're teaching your body how to do this with a little bit of external um, movement so that when it comes time to sit down and really get your mind to um, keep your body still, it's easier for you to sink into that level of meditation. So I hope this helps you understand a little bit about your vagus nerve and why it's so important and integral really to your overall healing process. Because if you're, if you know what to do right, but your body is fighting you, right? Like, you know, you need to be quiet to meditate. You know, you shouldn't react to the narcissist when they send you a message. You know that you can't you know, let your emotions run all over the place when you're in court, and yet you're finding it really difficult to do that. It's because you haven't learned how to make your vagus nerve get online so that it can do its function. This video will help you learn how to do that, right? Instead of your body controlling your life, which again, it's going to make bad choices for you because it's dysregulated, you really need to learn how to use your mind to control your brain, to control your body. And so start doing some of these things, start regulating your vagus nerve. Again, you can look into uh, integrative vagus nerve healing, and there's coaches out there who do just this kind of work. Um, But at the very least, go Google somatic exercises into YouTube. You can find some great movements for you to incorporate every single day. Get in the cold, hum to yourself, do things that you know are purposefully going to turn on your sympathetic nervous system to help your body get ahead. And with that, I will see you in the next video.